Hey guys, this is Gary from MeetYourCamera.com. Uh, this video is basically the perils and pleasures of the develop module. I just want to show you some things that you might not be aware of that are, you know, convenience features of Lightroom and also some things to avoid. All right, so let's get right to it. First, uh, the interface itself. So this is the way most people work, you know, with the, the left and right columns and the top and bottom uh, panels visible. That's the way I used to work, but I don't work that way anymore. So basically, uh, you very seldom need the left hand panel. So you can get rid of that by hitting your F7 key. And you don't really need the top panel either while you're editing. So you can hit the F5 key and then the film strip panel at the bottom you can get rid of that and now you have a much larger area with, with which to work and this is especially important on a laptop alright now um, if you're not seeing this bar at the very bottom hit your T key to reveal it so you want your toolbar this is your toolbar alright now let's talk about the right hand column because that's where all your editing functions are um, there's a bunch of panels here and right now they're all expanded well you can collapse them all pretty easily by right clicking in this dark gray area and selecting collapse all now this is the way I actually prefer to work now uh, if I want to work at any one area there are key commands for that so if I want to reveal my histogram all I need to do is go command or control zero that expands my histogram command or control zero once again will collapse it. Command and Control 1 will reveal my basic panel. Command and Control 1 again will collapse it. Now if you right click in this dark gray area there's a mode called solo mode and that's pretty cool. So if I expand my basic panel or let me let me get out of solo mode. I want to let me just show you what happens. So now I've got my basic panel expanded and let's say I want to go to HSL so I go Command or control 3 so now both my basic and my HSL panel are expanded okay well if I change to solo mode alright so now I'm going to expand my basic panel and now I'm going to go to HSL command and control 3 it automatically collapses the basic panel so in solo mode you can only have one section expanded at a time and again, if you're working on a laptop, that's very convenient. So um, I'm going to leave it in solo mode. And let's look at this image. I'm going to go to the basic panel. So I shot this deer at 200 millimeters. And uh, if I zoom in, you can see that he already saw me. So he took off pretty quickly. So I managed to get just a few frames. Problem is, he's standing in shadow and he's pretty camouflaged. So let's see if we can do something to help here. First, I'm going to crop in. So, taking my crop tool, I'm just going to crop in something like this. Move him so he's in like the, uh, you know, the intersection point in the rule of thirds. Okay, that's pretty good. Hit done. Okay, now the deer is in shadow. Uh, the tendency to always go for adjustment brushes is, is, you know, pretty common, but I try and avoid that. I mean, there are sometimes there are better ways to work without having to use an adjustment brush so <clears throat> for example uh, if I increase my exposure I can see the deer a lot better and if I give it more clarity and maybe open up the shadows okay that's actually pretty good but obviously the backgrounds too bright so I made some adjustments which really help out the deer let me lower the highlights too uh, increased contrast as well uh, alright so now I'm gonna take my radial tool and let me make sure the color is set to neutral and I'm gonna double click on effect to make sure that everything is defaulted to zero and I'm gonna lower my exposure by about two stops so I'm gonna make sure invert mask is unchecked and when I create this radio filter, everything outside the filter is being stopped down by two stops. That's that's actually too much, so I'm going to back off 
I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. I just want to darken the background. So about one stop looks pretty good. Uh, and if I change the shape of the oval, all right, that's actually pretty good. So I'm going to hit done. All right, so here's where we were before. Here's after. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so now you might want to grab an adjustment brush and start painting on the deer, but this is something you might not have thought about. So if I go Command and Control 3 to go to HSL, I can lower the saturation of green by taking my green slider and moving to the left, and also yellow because there's actually a lot of yellow in plant green. That's probably a little too much. All right, so just by de-emphasizing the grass, the deer stands out a lot more. Okay? That's probably a little too much. It looks a little weird. Okay, uh, so that's not something you might have thought of, and, and it really does get the job done pretty pretty well. Um, so there you go. I mean, here's the before. Here's the after. I think that's much better. So, all right, let's open another image. I'm going to go F6 to reveal the, uh, the film strip. And let's, let's open this image right here. So this is my dog, Cinnamon. Uh, so I'm going to go back up to the basic module, the basic panel, and I'm just going to simply increase exposure a little bit and increase clarity to give her fur a little bit of a sheen. That's actually pretty good. Maybe increase contrast just a touch, exposure a little more, maybe like just to one stop. Okay, that's good. So a couple things. If I zoom in, I can go grab a spotting, spot healing brush, and just sort of paint over this crud below her eye. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm going to zoom out. Much better. All right, so I'm going to hit done. Uh, okay, I'm going to open up the shadows just a touch. There we go. Okay, now we're really getting somewhere. That's good. Zoom out. All right, so um, now some people have asked if, if you could change the background color in Lightroom. And the answer is probably not. So right now the background color is white. If I did want to try and change the background color, um, I would grab an adjustment brush and then paint with a color. Let's say like this color blue. All I'm really doing now is painting with a color, like so. Okay, uh, I'm going to darken the exposure so you can see the color a lot better. Now, I'm going to make sure that Auto Mask is on because I want to try and show you that, uh, contrary to what some people think, the Auto Mask feature is very limited. It doesn't really work in a lot of cases, this being one of them. Whenever you had your, have a complex edge, which is going to happen when you're talking about fur, the uh, auto masking function doesn't really work very well. So if I darken this even more and then zoom in and show you the edge, You can see it's a big mess. So basically, if you're going to change the color, even when I make it lighter, you can see that the edge looks terrible. So the bottom line is Lightroom is not a good place if you want to change the color of the background. Just to show you that it actually can be done very well, uh, let's go over to Photoshop. Look at Photoshop. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the edges are very clean, looks great. So Photoshop has some tools which make this uh, very doable. But sorry to say, Lightroom is not the place uh, to be to be changing the background. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, retouching. So here's an image. Uh, let me get rid of the film strip by going F6. Okay, so. If you want to retouch, uh, there's actually a brush, a custom brush. If I choose Soften Skin, basically, clarity is all the way down to minus 100, 
and sharpness is up a little bit. So if I paint with the softening, softened skin brush, it's actually doing a pretty decent job. Let me zoom in, hold down my space bar to get my hand tool, and get underneath the eyes. So it basically, you know, covers a multitude of sins, as they say. So I'm painting all around the face, make my brush smaller, get underneath the eyebrow. And the, the cool thing is you don't have to be all that accurate. What I've noticed a lot of people forget about is the neck area. So I'm going to make my brush larger and just, you know, paint away. And I'm going to, I should have my auto mask turned off. As a, that was not a good idea to have auto mask turned on there. So while that did a pretty good job, it looks a little fake to me. So I'm going to back off on clarity. More like that. I want to see some texture. Now I'm going to take my spotting brush, make it a little larger and back off on the feathering and get rid of some blemishes. Um, like that over here and here. Okay, on the tip of the nose there's a little bit and then there's a line on the forehead. I'll just paint that away. Okay, that's good. All right, so spotting is, is done. Now I'm going to make my spotting healing brush a little larger and go underneath the eyes and bring that up over the forehead. And now I'm going to back off on the opacity to about 30, 34. I don't want to get rid of the bags. I just want to minimize them. Something like that. So I've got the uh, opacity set to about 34. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. So uh, now the, uh, the furrowed brow. You always want to have Lightroom grab pixels from a smooth skin area. That's usually going to be the forehead or the cheek. And again, with, with a 30%, uh, opacity. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm just minimizing it. Now I'm going to make my opacity 100% and I'm going to zoom in very close and make my brush very small and just spot out these bumps. And I have to actually move that in because there's already a a spot healing instantiation below that. Okay. That's good. I have this one little flyaway hair here. I'm going to make my brush really small and just kind of paint along that hair. And that's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back out. Okay. So now if I hover off, Right down here, uh, I have tool overlay set to auto, so when I hover off the editing area, I don't see all those, uh, you know, those push pins. All right, so to my eye, the skin looks a little fake, so I'm going to activate that brush, that adjustment brush, and back off on clarity a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Here's before, here's after, before, after. So, uh, you know, these are a few of the little uh, hints about uh, editing and in this case, um, you know, retouching. Let's do one more image because it's getting kind of long here. Oh, okay, let's look at this one. All right, so this image was shot at ISO 640, 6400, I should say. So you can see it's really noisy. So um, a couple things. Uh, First of all, 
If I, in my basic module, I can increase exposure a little bit, increase vibrance, warm it up just a touch, and increase clarity. So I'm making some big improvements with really not a whole lot of effort here. Um, so I'm going to set my white and black point. If I hold down the Alt key, I take my black slider, move it to the left until I can see some pixelation. That's good. Then same with the whites. Take my Alt key, hold it down, and move my white slider until I get to see some pixels appear like that. Okay, that's, that's much better. So here's the before, here's the after. So let's look at this noise. Um, really bad, right? So if I go down to my detail slider, which is Commander Control 5, I have this luminance noise reduction. I'm going to take this slider and move it to the right to a value of about 60. That does a really good job of minimizing that noise, but I've still got a lot of color noise. So if I take my color slider, also move it to about 60, that's really good. It got rid of all the color noise. All right, so now um, the tendency of a lot of people is to sharpen. So I'm going to go sharpen. And as you can see, I'm sharpening the noise, and I don't want to do that. So if I hold down my Alt key, I can take my masking slider and move it to the right. If I keep going, what's going to happen is it's only going to sharpen the heavier edges, which is actually what I want. So now, if I, may, if I take my, my pixel radius, something like that, Okay, so now the sharpening isn't sharpening everything. It's just sharpening the heavier edges, which creates the illusion that the image is actually sharper. All right, so that's before sharpening. That's after sharpening. I'm hitting it pretty hard with a pixel radius of about one and a half. So that's, a, that's actually a good tip for you because people almost always over sharpen and especially after reducing noise. If you're going to reduce noise and then sharpen, you're resharpening the noise. So this masking slider with the Alt key held down allows you to adjust what actually gets sharpened. The farther to the right you go, the less fine-tuned the sharpening is, which in this case is a good thing. All right, um, I guess that's about it. Uh, I mean, there's obviously a lot more to this stuff, but hopefully, um, you know, I've given you guys some insight in some of the lesser known features inside of Lightroom. So, uh, all right, I hope you found this video useful. Now you go make something. That's my new tagline. You go make something. All right, guys, this is Gary from MeetYourCamera.com. See ya.